Hello, I'm Ashish Patel. And I am Victoria Hernandez. Today, we are going to be covering the national and regional summaries and spark lines from the COVID Community Profile Report released by HHS and CDC. Both Ashish and I are healthcare data journalists at CareSet. Uh, CareSet Journal is a healthcare data journalism organization focusing on Medicare data. We have created an FAQ that's on our GitHub for this community report, and we would before anything like to thank the data journalists at CareSet, researchers from the University of Minnesota COVID-19 Hospitalization Tracking Project, the COVID Exit Strategy, and COVID Act Now, as well as researchers from the COVID Tracking Project. We cannot stress enough that COVID continues to be a serious issue. We recommend following CDC guidelines in the following slides, you're going to see a lot of green. Green is good, but it does not mean safe. And so we still recommend that you follow the recommendations from the CDC. Thanks, Victoria. So I will walk us through a few tables that are in this public use file. Now, keep in mind, at really high level, these reports are going to be published on a daily basis. This analysis or this review is from the very first edition of that. So you see at the bottom, initial public release. That was released on December 17th. Uh, and what we're seeing, I'll just address the very top of the table here, are national metrics going back, uh, back to the April peak. And looking across the columns, you'll see cases, test positivity, confirmed hospitalizations, and deaths. So this is the bird's eye view of how the United States is doing in its battle against COVID and its recovery from the pandemic. So looking really just at the case count and moving through these rows, just want to use the mouse here. So over the last seven days, you can see the case count in the country along with the cases per 100,000. Uh, and then over to the next column over, you see the positivity rate. So you can see right now, or over the last seven days, we we're at 11.2%. Now there are other charts and other videos that we're reviewing that'll help you understand that the volume of lab tests is ever increasing. So as our volume of lab tests increase, and then the positivity rate starts to level off or starts to decline, this is a, the positive indication from both the federal government perspective state CBSA or regional perspective that our communities are actually recovering and beginning to exit from the COVID pandemic. The next column over to the right looks at the confirmed admissions per 100 beds. Now, this is one of the key factors to, to watch out for. Uh, there is another data file that CMS and CDC, I'm sorry, HHS uh, has released a few weeks ago that looks at COVID bed hospitalization by hospital. It is a CCN coded or CMS certification number coded. So each facility is identified there with its total number of ICU beds, total number of inpatient beds. And for those of the denominators, we have a number of COVID patients that are occupying those beds. This is how families around the country are able to identify whether or not the hospital on Main Street is overrun with COVID cases. Is it pegged? Is that 100% full of COVID cases for every available bed? And then the next column immediately over to the right of that <clears throat> is deaths. Now, you can see that the number in parentheses is 5.5. You'll notice that this is the national peak, 5.5 deaths per 100,000 citizens in the United States that are, uh, that are affected. Now, this is, uh, you know, as high as it's ever been. And based on, I, I believe that the motivation around releasing facility level data and this kind of aggregated data from states the CDC is collecting on a daily basis is really an attempt to create the kind of transparency to make sure that this never gets worse or this is the end uh, of the peak. Now, yeah. it's important to note that this data has never been released before. And so what you get from the COVID tracking project and other websites are all scraped and aggregated data that they've pulled, but this is what the U.S. government actually uses to make their recommendations and strategy. Good point. Uh, so you think about 
the U.S. government has the uh, opportunity and the, the ability to deploy physicians and nurses and remdesivir to uh, the most dramatically affected geographies. This is the information the CDC has been collecting to inform those decisions. And now it is in the public. Uh, for the last few days, it's been in the public. And hopefully it will help not only our local policymakers, but families actually make these, the, the choices that are appropriate for their communities and their hospitals on Main Street. So if you, if you kind of, on the top half of the screen, you look over further right, what we have here is the change from previous week. This is actually where we can begin to understand how as a country over the last seven days and from a week ago, how things are, you know, where we are getting better and where we are getting worse. And again, green is good, but not safe, right? So we can see that the lab positivity rate has, has decreased very slightly, just under a percent, but the positivity rate is already incredibly high in the country. So it's no, no reason to be able to relax our, uh, our adherence to CDC recommendations. If you would like to address the spark line, yeah. Yeah, so at the very end, the last column, you'll see these little lines. They're called spark lines. I believe Tufty coined the term. Um, they're high level, single axis lines, um, tr trends, and in this case, going back to eight weeks. And these will be in the PDF version of the community report, but not the Excel file. That's a good point. So uh, in co as a companion to the PDF, that are released every day, CDC is releasing Excel files. So local um, data analysts and folks who are informing public health policy can really track what each of these variables um, using computers and computer software to really create local models. So when we think about local models, just looking to the bottom half, you see the regional metrics. Now these regional metrics are broken up by FEMA region. So if you could uh, just for a moment show the FEMA map. So here, this is how FEMA models distribution of resources, federal resources during the time of uh, emergency like we're we are experiencing. So uh, if you want to go back over to the table, uh, you can see particularly the various regions broken out um, and highlighted for which regions are experiencing the worst of the pandemic, uh, both in the last seven days and again compared to the prior week. Uh, as, as well as companion trend lines looking at the case count in the FEMA region for the last eight weeks. And on the point Victoria had made earlier, in about eight weeks, we will have the daily data from these releases to be able to generate our own trend lines. But for now, CDC is providing these trend lines for the history of information that we are not, uh, we don't have immediate access to. And then if we scroll to the next slide, so we'll see red states and orange states, not red, blue. This is red showing the COVID cases and what it looks like right now. Um, if you'd like to give a little more detail. Yeah, so these, these levels, of, uh, levels of challenge, I think they were referred to as uh, red, orange, and I'm just gonna preview yellow, light green, uh, and dark green. This, they're classified based on the extent of challenge that's experienced in each of these States due to COVID. So uh, no surprise if you've seen any of the other videos that we're deep diving into various the various geographic of the, the national maps, the heat maps, you'll see Tennessee is having, a, you know, is really peaking out. Their hospitals are really heavily occupied. Their, their uh, confirmed case count and lab test positivity rates are also very high. And they top the list here in terms of the lab positivity rate. But one thing to note here is that in the red, down here, that California, Connecticut, DC, uh, uh, Tennessee, the testing data have not been reported to the federal government since December 12th uh, or earlier, which, which may result in missing values and inaccurate test positivity. Tennessee testing reporting is low this week, which may result in inaccuracies. So these kinds of caveats, uh, uh, CDC, I believe, is trying to make sure that folks who grab a hold of these and start to make decisions are aware. So there's a ton of detail buried into these high-level uh, analyses, and through this PDF is just rich with information about where the data comes from, how the data was analyzed, and what is generating the tables. Great, thank you. And if you have any questions, please refer back to the community FAQ.
Uh, so thank you for your time. We will continue to refresh these videos as data becomes uh, available. Um, and uh, again, keep, keep in mind the CDC recommendations as you go into the holidays. We really have an opportunity to make sure that this is the national peak and we never see these kinds of conditions again.